Hello everyone and welcome back. Hope this video finds you all in good health. If you watched my last video, you would have seen me working on the fenders and the raggles. Well, I've finished them both now, so now it's time to uh, start working on chain wells. These are the parts that were supplied with the kit, and these came over two issues. This came in issue 75 and obviously issue 72. So, without any further ado, I'm going to bring down Victory and we'll start measuring the positions of the chain wells. So, I've just added a 2 mil spacer, in fact, it's actually 3 mil spacer. And I'm going to take the uh, main mass chain well and I'm just going to lay it on the side. And I'm just going to check the position along this edge. I'm just going to see that it's, it fits nice and flush. I think you can see. Obviously, when I, when I edit the video, I'll zoom in so you can see this better. So that one fits quite nice, so I don't really need. Any uh, any tapering or sanding just to make it fit into the whole bear. That fits quite flush, so that's okay. Just trace a little pencil mark all the way, all the way around. So it's got the indication mark where it's going to be. Okay, so let's move it along and have a look at the foremast. So it's got my three mil space again. And I'm just gonna just, uh, just masking tape it on. So it just sat on top of the the last chain whale we fitted. Sorry, just whale. Okay, so I've got the four mast chain whale. And I'm gonna let's sort of see, put it onto position. But as you can see from this this time. You can see need there's a gap. I don't know if you can see this one under here because obviously got this lip. But yeah, as I'm doing this, I know it's the lip's probably sat sat way too out. It's not in the correct position, so it's gonna have to be readjusted at some time. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave when it first starts to you see the gap there, when the gap kind of disappears, it's gonna leave a pencil mark. And then I'll know that's where I need to start to remove some material. So then obviously when you put it back on, it's going to sit flush. So I've just put Victory back on the shelf. And all I'm going to do now is just draw a, a line. Also, I drew a pencil line first, but I think it may be a bit too extreme. So I'm just going to start off smaller. All I'm doing is freehanding the curve. And I'm just going to take the, the craft knife. And I'm just going to start trimming a bit of the chain rail off. stopping before I get to the curve. I'm going to pass it down a few times and I'll just freehand it. And then I'm just going to start to into this curve. Hope you can see okay. And that's just cut it tapered. So I'll do just get a little bit of sandpaper, a few passes. And that's gonna get that was gonna Try fit it back on victory and see what it looks like. Okay, so I just brought a victory back down off the shelf. I'm just going to test fit this chain wheel for the first time. As you can see before, 
when we fitted it for the first time that was where the position marking is where they started with the uh, the gap but you see now the gaps only just down to that section so that just means I think it just needs a little bit more carving and tapering off into this section here and then that'll fit nice and snug okay I'll just try fit that again you know I'm getting to the stage where there's barely barely a gap at all so I just think it needs a little bit more sanding back to the line and that'll fit nice that one fits really snug there's a slight gap there probably just took a little bit too much out you, you're talking probably 0.25 mil so it's not going to be an issue it's just as you're looking down the line you can see there's about five mil section there it's probably just a little bit over tapered but you're not going to see that sometimes a little bit over picky okay move on to the next stage okay i've just indicated the two the bow and the stern on the part so i'll see when i'm drawing the holes drilling holes i don't want to get them in the wrong positions i'm just going to draw a center line all the way across that so on the next day you're saying to drill a 0.7 hole and these are for the little eyelets but obviously i don't you don't really need to drill a 0.7 hole the pins that come obviously that we do all the planking with they're always 0.7 so pretty much all I ever do is I cut near enough a pin put it into my little drill vise and it also makes a little tighter fit when you put the eye bolts in Get the main mass one and i'm going to do exactly the same as i've just done with the four mass chain well so i've just uh, finished off the main chain well not finished off i just marked it off sorry exactly the same way as did the uh, the four mass one if you want to follow the plans this is the way it, it tells you start working on the uh, the eye bolts sorry so it's, it tells you to start working on the dead eyes but obviously I'm not going to do that. I don't. It, it's. Uh, let me explain. It's just going to get in the way of painting and, and everything else. I know they're doing, painting it a lot different to me and they're doing it in stages. But obviously, I'm, my plan is, is obviously I want to pretty much get everything fitted. Do you mean that you're going to have to glue and fit before I actually paint it? Because I don't, I don't really agree with it, obviously. Uh, painting things first and then adding new parts onto it if you, if you get what I mean but obviously if, if you've, this is your first build and you've obviously you've never built a, a model ship before just follow the instructions obviously I've built one or two in the past I haven't built one for a while but obviously so I'm actually going to do the dead eyes after it's all fitted and painted so yeah if you don't want to fit it in the instructions and you want to carry on fitting it how I'm going to do it later on in the series I will be showing you how I uh, make the dead eyes so they can be fitted after the chain whale has been fitted but that's entirely up to you okay so because I'm not following to the instructions so my, all I need to do in my next stage is I need to add a face plate obviously there's something that keeps the dead eyes in place I'll see that's why in the instructions why they show you to add the dead eyes first because obviously the way they show you to make the dead eyes you want to be able to get them in after but yeah so all I need to do is just cut a little length for this 3 three mil by 1 mil and then just glue it in place
Okay, so I'm just going to clamp this on. I'll leave that to dry and come back to it in a minute. Uh, so I'm just waiting for the glue to dry. And obviously, I was thinking while I was waiting for the glue to dry, thinking, where's the muzzin? Where's the muzzin chain well? So obviously, I started looking through the issues. And they actually come in issue 82, and you actually build them from issue 83. And because I kind of want to build them all in one go, I don't want to build two one one week and then two another week. Before I get issue 82, 83 out, and I build them all in one go. So I know I've kind of skipped it a little bit forward, but I just think it'll, it's just better to get them all done in one go. Like I did before, and I'm going to start off by just by marking the positions. So let's get my little little spacer. We'll stick that above the gluing wheel. And that's just sat directly on top. And I'll try and find a pencil. I'm gonna put a picture on the screen of my workbench. I don't know anybody else is the same, but it does when you're building these ships, just take over. I've got stuff every. I try and keep organised and try and clean it away after every every session, but there's still bits everywhere. But yeah, I'll put pictures so you can look and then give me a comment. Let me know if your workplace is the same. But anyway, carry on. When it comes ports. So I'll just put an indication mark either side. Let's check what that's like. Let's tilt that so you can see. And let's check. Now, as you can see, that one's that one fits quite flush, so that's okay. Don't really need any tapering. Okay, so I'll just mark all the positions like I did before. These are actually directional. So just make sure you've got them lined up correct on the plans. I measured the last ones, but I found out that they slightly moving off so I'm actually just gonna you know, transfer the line from the plans down and it's pretty good because that's pretty much a like line going over there and that's a point there so you just pretty much join between these two points yeah that'd be fine most likely before just using my silver mill drill instead of a little punch actually I'm just gonna straight down. Say it's 07 mil. We don't really need to drill it unless you're probably right against the edge, then you can drill it. And that makes a nice tight fit for the eyelets. Just bring a couple across. So all I'm going to do now is like I did for the, uh, the main mast and the fore mast. So I'm going to cover this with a cover plate, let, let the glue dry and carry on. So while the glue dries on the uh, muzzin mast chain whale, I just brought the main mast one over. I'm just going to sand this face plate. Then I'm going to fit all the eyelets I drilled the little holes for. I 
was going to use a track cloth. I bought them ages ago. I keep forgetting to use them. They're really good for just getting all the fine surfaces. That's all the fine surface dust off. You don't need a lot. It's tacky ones, yes. That's what it says in the packet. It's a tacky cloth, and obviously you wipe over. He just gets up and he leaves sawdust. I'll show you. I'll show you the desk. Good. It's good for when you're actually sanding, actually sanding the hole and things like that before you start painting. Let's get some of that surface dust off. Okay, so now I'm going to start sticking in the eyelets. So I've just got my super glue over. I've dropped a bit in a little bit of just, just a plastic comes along with me. Terminator builds. So I'm just going to. From the end of the, end of the eyelet in. I'm just gonna. In fact, I'm just gonna open up that hole again a slightly more. Just open up the holes again. process all the way down. I just want all the faces square. So all I'm doing is using some side cutters, getting as flush as possible to the part, put your thumb over the top of it and then snip it off. What I mean is you put your thumb over the top four so the part doesn't ping off and hit you in the eyes. I tend to wear some safety safety glasses if I'm also using the lathe. I'm not sure they're knocking about. So yeah, so you just put your thumb over it. Can't go wrong. But obviously, the, what you're going to get is you're still going to see about there's probably about 0.25 mil sticking out. So what you're going to do? Stick it flush on your sandpaper and just back as a forward. Don't worry about that. Get your tackle off again, keep forgetting I've got it. And you can see they're flush because you can see how shiny the, uh, the brass is. Yeah, I and mean, you can't even feel them anymore now. Okay, so I'm just going to carry on doing the other two parts, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I finished all the, the five channels, sanded them all smooth, and they're ready to be fitted. Well, not too permanently fitted, but obviously a test fit. Obviously you get these support arms, but you don't actually get them until when you when you actually fit them according to the magazine from issue 87 obviously I'm not going to 100% fit them yet but I still want to fit on these these support legs and they also want to look into uh, trying to mechanically fit them well not mechanically but just fit these better because obviously in the show, so you just, you just glue that on and then you you pin the arms the support arms in but obviously I want to just try and obviously think away and obviously um, been able to fit that so it when you're working with it's a lot easier to work with okay so i'll bring victor down and have a look at that okay so i've just brought victor back down i've refitted my uh, temporary female spacer what i'm going to do is i'm just going to just line it up positions and i'm just going to mark it on the channel and onto the plank in itself. Maybe do 
maybe do three. So I'm just getting a little scrap of wood. And we have Martin on this one. Hold up. Top of the spacer. I'm just going to draw them, make sure I'm pressing it down. So I've made obviously three holes. I'm going to drill a, a 1.5 millimeter hole. And then I'm going to drill a 1.5 millimeter hole into the back of the channel. Then insert a dowel. So I'll make it a lot easier just to fit it. So I'm just going to use my little pit and centre punch. I'm just going to drill just a tiny little hole. Side of the drill bit. Very slowly turning. It's really soft water. It doesn't take much. Really, really, really slowly. And just finger measure it. Yeah. Deep enough. Last one, centre it on, just eyeball it, make sure you can slowly start it. Also the last thing you want it to do is slip off. Slowly, slowly, slowly turn. Yeah. It's okay, let's use the cocktail stick. Just put it in and then just mark it. See how deep we are. going to be good. So all I've done is just use a cocktail stick because it's a, pretty much the correct measurement there of the, the driller made 1.8. I've done just temporary fitted it into the channel. When I actually fit it full time for the final fit, I'll actually just you get a piece of 1.8 mil copper dowel or a steel dowel and obviously that'll get a really permanent fixture I built a model 20 years ago first model I ever made which was the uh, HMS Bounty that was a part work kit and uh, if I ever go and look at it it's actually my brothers at the moment but when I actually go and look at it the channels have fell off that because obviously there wasn't any support arms on that it was just glued so obviously it's just all been pulled off by the rigging so yeah, so that's what's me thinking behind, and then the pins in first, and also it just makes it a lot easier to work with. <laughs> 